Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are back. It is LA Exposed. We are here with my special guest co host today, Lawrence. And uh, we're also here with the claim professor from the communications department here at UCLA, Professor Francis Steen. How you doing, buddy? Great. Yeah, how are you? Doing well, doing well, doing well. So we were talking about dreams, we were talking about reality, and I believe Lawrence has some questions for you. Yeah, um, I, I didn't really introduce myself, but uh, I'm actually a psychology student, so I'm actually, you know, pretty interested in uh, what you're talking about and, you know, your perceptions of realities and things like that. So I had a question, like, you know, there's a lot of people who are depressed nowadays, and that's their reality, and I was just wondering, like, what do you think about, like, you know, antidepressants, because that's kind of warping their reality. What do you think about that? Right. So uh, uh, part of the challenge that we're facing in uh, understanding ourselves and understanding what's going on with the brain and the mind, right, is that uh, we now have very sophisticated uh, pharmaceuticals uh, that uh, affect the brain in relatively specific ways. Mm -hmm. uh, now, we don't understand a lot about how they work, and we don't necessarily have a good model of the whole brain. So we're intervening into a whole system where we understand a little part. So that's right. part of the story, right? Mm -hmm. Right. And, um, you know, do you think um, the people that actually, you know, a lot of people are prescribed these drugs, and do you think a majority of them actually need it? Well, so I mean, there are some studies on that showing that, uh, you know, for sort of lightly depressed people, uh, the uh, commonly prescribed uh, antidepressants, the serotonin uptake inhibitors, uh, do nothing. Oh, wow. So, uh, you know, you, these are used in amounts so that you can detect them in the sewers of big cities. Right. Yeah. And yeah. They, they, don't, uh, they don't do anything to people, according to this research. Wow. So, th so essentially, the research is claiming that SSRIs, uh, such as Zoloft, uh, these are serotonin reuptake inhibitors, Zoloft, Paxil, um, Prozac, all of these essentially don't work. Well, no, they're not saying that they blanket don't work. They're just saying for most people, they don't do anything. Hmm. Right? They're saying uh, for, for, for uh, uh, very depressed people, they make a difference. Could it, could it be like uh, maybe a placebo effect? And maybe, maybe you can give us a, kind of like a taste of that because that, that is a phenomenon. And yeah, I'm yeah. just wondering, <laughs> it's you know, a really like... cool phenomenon. Exactly. Right. And it's like, it's not the drug, but it's like maybe just the, the thought about taking the drug or I'm taking a drug. Well, that, that but I mean, just, just, just reflect on that for a moment, right? That, right. That, uh, you know, the, 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 the kind of universally most successful medicine for everything right yeah. is uh, uh is this placebo right right so uh, all medicines have to be tested against that as a gold standard if they can't be better than a placebo then they don't get approved right, right. wow so uh, so there are amazing processes uh, that allow the mind to uh, uh you know um, uh, just through belief uh, make a significant impact on all kinds of uh, biological processes right so there's something really deep there that we certainly don't fully understand uh, that uh, allow uh, uh, the perception of a meaning at one level uh, to uh, manifest at the level of the being of the body. Wow, that, that's quite f philosophical, <laughs> Professor Steen. <laughs> so, um, I so, 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 if I could just, uh, yeah, if yeah. I could just uh, interject. So, you, uh, people like to go the other way, right? So, they'd like to go from the level of the of the of the being of the body. In other words, they, you can uh, intervene with pharmaceuticals, and then they want to make claims that that changes the meaning, that changes how people feel. Right, mm -hmm. but the point is, this is dynamic. This goes both ways. Right. That's yeah, that's actually a great point, Professor. Um, also, I wanted to ask. So, <laughs> little, a lot of stuff going on today. Um, so, how about alcohol? You know, it's very prominent among college students. You know, it's also very known that it causes um, memory damage, and uh, in fact, uh, more so among females than males. Apparently, they don't. Uh, I guess they metabolize it differently. I'm not exactly sure what's going on. But you know, alcohol has always been very prominent in our society, and people use that to shape their reality. What do you th What do you think about that? Well, I mean, uh, uh, you know, it's uh, it's up to people what they want to do. Um, I don't uh, personally uh, use it, actually. Uh, I, th I I in part out of respect for uh, these very complex processes that happen in the brain, right? So I don't think we have any real reason to mess with it, right? Uh, right. I would look for uh, you know a, a good healthy lifestyle and and uh, there are all kinds of uh, extraordinary experiences we can have that uh, don't need to be drug induced. I know many college students also smoke marijuana. In fact, so many people want it legalized. What do you think about that? How do you think that will affect our society? You know, if everyone is going to start smoking marijuana. Well, I think the evidence is uh, is is mixed on that count. Uh, on the one hand, uh, it seems to actually be less uh, dangerous than alcohol. 
Uh, but there are some recent studies that came out that show uh, a relation between uh, marijuana use uh, during teenage years and psychosis, uh, suggesting that it dramatically increases the incidence of psychosis. Now, if, if that's true, that would be quite serious. So wait, define psychosis for our audience? Uh, well, psychosis uh, you know, basically means uh, the state we talked about uh, uh, before, where you're unable to uh, distinguish between what comes from your memory and what comes from perception. Oh, wow. So very, very loosely, right? So it's a, it's a, it's a very debilitating uh, state, right? Wow, that is that is very very <laughs> scary. Yeah, scary. so that, that that's quite uh, serious. If that uh, if that uh, 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 you know turns out to uh, to be the case, right? So early studies now suggest that uh, there's a correlation. Wow. Are there any projects you're currently working on? Any research projects? Uh, so uh, I mean, we're doing uh, lots of projects, right? We're uh, among other things, we're working on an interdisciplinary project that goes all the way from uh, brain science, uh, you know, computer uh, science, uh, up through uh, uh, the social sciences and, uh, and the humanities for developing a uh, center for uh, visual communication and persuasion. One of our projects is uh, design uh, news mediation of the future. So this is one of the stuff we're things we're working on. Um, our society is kind of like, you know, um, addicted to play or the like video game. Like perhaps, like, what do you think about that? It's kind of like, like its own reality. Like people go online and they play hours and hours of, yeah, RPG or whatever. Yeah, that's right. So I mean, the, this is a, a, a big issue here is whether, um, uh, you know, what what kind of learning uh, that takes place uh, during these uh, uh, massively multiplayer online role playing games, right? Right. And uh, again, I think the evidence there is that. Um, uh, you know, for uh, for certain vulnerable populations, you actually do learn strategies that get deployed in ways that can be quite destructive. Uh, at the same time, for the vast majority of people, uh, the uh, uh, the real world uh, and uh, and the and the world of the game uh, are kept uh, you know in an orderly fashion away from each other. Right. Uh, and uh, you know, it's it, it it doesn't mean that if you're Aggr behaving aggressively online, that that will automatically translate into your life. You're 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 smarter than that. Right? But there's like a, a population of people who who merge the two. You'd say. Well, the, and and there may be situations with anyone, right, where right. you are suddenly you're under stress. You're uh, you know you're in a situation where suddenly these out of you know uh, far out strategies may suddenly seem attractive to you. Cool. Very fascinating. Thank you again, Professor Steen. Uh, it's been uh, fabulous having you. Hopefully, we'll have you again in the future. Um, thank you so much. Right, um, yeah, thank you, guys. Any last words? Uh, maybe some uh, shout-outs to your fans? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I can count my students as my fans. I, 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 I don't think I'll take it quite that far. Oh. Just my imagination is it